Today, we will talk about cartography, projections, and scales, which are essential concepts for the proper interpretation of navigation charts. So let's start by defining cartography. This word comes from carta which means map, and graph, which means write, and it is the science of representing a part, or all of the Earth's surface graphically at a smaller scale in a 2D surface, such as a piece of paper. This graphic representation obtained is called a map. But, why do we sometimes say map, and sometimes chart? Well, a chart is actually a type of map. Let's look at this in more detail. In general terms, a chart is a specialized map, which contains information related to a particular purpose. For example, a nautical chart will show information such as sea depth, lighthouses, ports, and so forth, since its purpose is to assist the navigation of ships. However, in the case of aviation, an aeronautical chart is a map adapted to the needs of air navigation, which contains detailed relevant information on the most important aspects, such as obstacles, navades, airports, airspaces, etc. Now, with this being said, when we try to create a map or chart that correctly represents the surface of the Earth, we run into a big problem, and it is that representing a 3D figure such as the Earth in a 2D surface is extremely complicated. Since it is impossible to represent the Earth on a 2D plane maintaining all its proportions, scales and features correctly. However, we can try to get as close to perfection as possible. To try to do this, the Earth's surface must be projected into shapes that can actually be represented in a 2D surface, such as cylinders or cones, which are developable surfaces. Now, all these attempts to represent the Earth in different shapes are known as projections, and there are a lot of them. Each projection receives its name depending on its characteristics and the properties it preserves. For example, a conformal projection maintains the correct shape of objects and surfaces. An equivalent projection maintains the magnitude of the area of objects and surfaces correctly. An equidistant projection maintains the ratio of the distance between two objects or surfaces correctly. And an azimuthal projection maintains the direction between two objects or surfaces correctly. Now, although it would be great to be able to include all of these features on the same map, there is no existing projection that preserves all of these characteristics at the same time. So it must be decided which of these features is more important to include in the map depending on its purpose. Now, to understand better how a projection is developed, it can be described as putting a light bulb in the center of the Earth and a piece of paper around the planet. Then, when the light bulb is turned on, the surface of the Earth is projected onto the piece of paper becoming a map. This way, the resulting map will depend on how the paper is placed around the Earth, and that is why there are different types of projections. Now, an important thing regarding this, is that in all types of projections there is one or more points where the paper touches the surface of the Earth, and as a general rule, these points where the projection touches the surface are the most accurate and precise, in terms of scale, distance, direction, shape, etc., and as we move away from these points, the map begins to distort. So with this being said, let's take a look at the most commonly used projections, starting with the azimuthal projection. It consists of a flat piece of paper that touches the earth at one of its poles as we can see in this images. The main characteristics of an azimuthal projection is that near the center point there is no distortion, the magnitude of the distortion increases as we move away from the center point, and direction and distance can only be measured correctly from the center point. This projection is often used to map the poles, but is not commonly used for navigation. Now, the next one is the cylindrical projection, which consists of a piece of paper that is folded into a cylinder shape and touches the Earth around the equator as we can see in these images. In this case, the projection touches the Earth around the entire equator line. Therefore, the main characteristics of this cylindrical projection are that near the equator there is no distortion, the magnitude of the distortion increases as we move away from the equator. Meridians and parallels intersect at 90 degrees angles, making it easier to measure direction, and it shows the shapes correctly, but the size is distorted. 
A clear example of this is the representation of Africa and Greenland. Here, we can clearly see that in reality, Africa is much bigger than Greenland. However, because of the distortion of this cylindrical projection, it looks like it is almost the same size. Finally, there is the conical projection, which consists of a piece of paper that is folded into a cone shape and touches the surface in two particular parallels, which are known as standard parallels as we can see in these images. In this case, since there are two points at which the projection touches the surface, in both of them the characteristics and properties are accurate and correctly preserved, giving as a result this pattern of distortion. Now, the main characteristics of this conical projection are that near the standard parallels there is no distortion, the magnitude of the distortion increases as we move away from these standard parallels, and it shows the shapes correctly, but the size is distorted, just like in the cylindrical projection. Here we can see an example of how a map is developed using this conical projection. Finally, something important to mention is that a projection can be arranged in different ways depending on the area to be mapped accurately, as we can see in these examples. Now, regarding the names of the projections, they consist of a combination of their creator, their main characteristic, and technique used. For example, the most used projections for navigation are the Lambert conformal conical and the Mercator conformal cylindrical. In these cases, to avoid excessive distortion, the charts used for air navigation focus on relatively small specific areas. And therefore for a certain flight, several charts may be required. Let's now move on to the scale. On an aeronautical chart it is important that the proportions of terrain and objects are correctly maintained. And the scale is the relationship between a measurement on the map or chart and the actual measurement on the Earth. And its formula is very simple, it is real distance divided by the map distance. Now, all maps publish the scale with which they were designed, and this can be found in different formats. For example, they can publish a numerical scale, or a graphic scale, or even a plain text scale. Here we can see some examples of how the scale is published on a map. This information is really useful when we have to determine distances on a map without a plotter. Let's see an example of how to do this. Let's say we have this chart with a scale of 1 in 1 million, and we want to determine the distance between the towns of Germania and Miraflores. However, we don't have a plotter, so we have to use a regular ruler that measures centimeters. According to this, we measure a distance on the map of 16 centimeters. So now the question is, with this information, how can we determine the real distance between these towns? Well, we have to use the scale formula, which is real distance divided by map distance. Right now we know the scale and the map distance, so we just have to rearrange the formula to determine the real distance, which in this case is 16 million centimeters. With this, we already know the real distance, but it is in centimeters, so we must convert units to nautical miles, obtaining as a result a distance of 86.4 nautical miles. In this example we used a map with a scale of 1 in 1 million. Let's see now another example, but now with a scale of 1 in 250,000. In this case, we want to determine the real distance between the towns of San Jose and Esmeralda, which are 12 centimeters apart on the map. So to do this, we use the previous formula to determine the real distance, which in this case is 3 million centimeters. Then we convert units to get nautical miles, obtaining as a result a real distance of 16.2 nautical miles between San Jose and Esmeralda. Now, normally we have available a plotter graduated with statute and nautical miles, so we don't have to do this procedure. However, it helps to understand the concept of scale. I hope the information presented in this video was useful. If so, don't forget to share, like, subscribe, and leave a comment down below. Thanks for watching.